Hi guys, Archie here. So for this video, we'll be um, in Anna or Elif showcase. So before that, let's take a look at her in-game model. I give the orders around here. Alright, so this is his in-game model. Overall, I like her style. He, she's cute. She's also cool. And then there's a uh, Javid here. Alright, and you can see the tail here. There's something wrong with the tail. Can keep on spinning the tail. Alright, so the 3D model itself is pretty cool. Alright, I like her body as well. I, <laughs> I like the stuff. There's a go there's a golden lion and then at the bottom there there's a snake design. Okay, but there's a few weird things about her kit and her leader buff as well. So I will go through uh, the skill as well, but keep note, I feel like they will change the leader buff or maybe something about her cute when it's uh, when it's an official server. So the reason why is at here. The defend buff, like he or she is a fighter as well that doesn't need a leader buff of defender, but why is she having a leader buff of 24%? And 24% only limit to point wall knockout and beat buff. Even universal defense buff is higher. Like uh universal defense buff like Fushi. Universal is 30%. It's a lot more better than what, what she uh what she's able to provide. Um so let's say other Esper. Like Ira here, universal is 24%. Universal is not even limited, it's universal. Who else oh, the Esper got defender leader buff? Let's say Ramsey. Ramsey leader buff 24% leader buff and not and it's a universal buff not limited to any kind of content but oh, Elif one is limited to point wall knockout and beat bout 24% only which is very weird so I think they will change the leader buff we already feedback for this part here like it's weird like like her, her kid doesn't even skill with defend any, anyway why why does he need this right so yeah uh, I think this part will change and let's continue Okay, so her divinity here, D3, after casting any ability, 100% chance of inflicting fervor for one turn. Okay, I don't know how to pronounce it, I'll call it fur. Fervor for one turn, and then uh, the divinity art, this is the divinity art for Elif. Alright, then what is the effect of that? Because this is a new effect that didn't mention before, so this is the effect. It's a very special effect because it's a new uh, silver debuff. It's damage taken increased by 2%. At the end of the, the debuffer carrier, it will clear this effect and then takes true damage. The, the true damage per stack is 1% of the max HP, of the, the target max HP, so up to 10 stack. So if you're able to stack up to max, it's a 20% damage taken increase. And then at the end of the turn, we'll take another 10% of the max HP from that target. So this effect here, if you let's say you stack it two until two stack, and when the carrier take the turn, this effect will will uh, will end no matter how many stack you have, and then it will take the damage. Then you have to restack it uh, if you want the damage taken. So this is the buff from the divinity effect itself. Then S1, do damage uh do damage to one enemy two times, and then damage per hit 30% can inflict seal. So uh, is up to 120%. Then passive. So at the start of the con combat, Elif will enter Lion Stance. So a Lion Stance will increase attack and defense plus 40%. She will gain a 100% maximum HP shield. But when the shield expires, remove this effect. So let's say this shield break already, right? Then he she will go into contested territory. So when she's inside contested territory, she herself will reduce speed by 40%, which makes her very slow and then immune to speed down, which you cannot make her even slower. Then dealing damage recover HP is 100% of your damage deal. If the carrier's max HP is 100% at, at the end of the active turn, which means when Elif take her action and her HP is 100%, then we'll remove contested territory and go back into lion stand. So this is how she's gonna rotate her buff. Okay, so what if the buff is if she gains attack up, crit rate up or crit damage up while in lion stance mode which is this one here then she will follow up with a s3 victory horn um, assist attack it triggers once per turn so this effect here can be refreshed by uh, can be triggered by refreshing the buff so let's say she's already have attack up then you apply another attack up from the other expert it will still trigger this as long as within this turn she haven't triggered this victory horn before 
but if she is inside the contested territory, she will perform an assist attack with S1 after any allied attack, which basically makes her into Yun Chuan. But uh, Yun Chuan is always consistent as long as the target having the third eye seal. But for Elif, it needs to be go into contested territory unless she went into R6 effect, right? I'll cover the R6 later. Then in her S3, so here we have crit rate, crit damage, and then attack up, right? So S3 here. Victory Horn attacks all enemy if the target is a boss. Dispel all the buffers, so it won't miss and cannot be resisted. So it's, it's good to target those, like let's say Dark Star Lord, is uh, have another two small mob inside him, and then he has the chance to give him himself crit rate up, attack up, all, buff all these things. So it's a good thing to cleanse, but not really that important. And then attack that target first. So 100% attack first, then only attack everyone with another 70%. Uh, attack then inflict defend down so s3 wise isn't that impressive at least from what i'm seeing now because in most of the pve content uh, especially in bossing the buff doesn't really matter because most of the time we'll apply buff blocker if really needed just that it will it will put up another insurance on the s3 to dispel it that's all pretty 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 that's all for her kit so for her kit i would say it's something similar to Yun Chuan. I don't know is it better than Yun Chuan or Yun Chuan is better than her but uh, this is how, how she works okay then Rezo wise so Rezo R2 dealing damage inflicts extra true damage is 50% of her attack uh, in, if you think of true damage maybe you figure of uh, is she able to fight Wu Yu I don't think so because I don't think that 50% true damage really matters too much like if you com consider as Jin Chiu as a true damage dealer right uh, if we compare with Jin Chu as a true damage dealer, like Jin Chu S3, well, like, okay, let's say S1. S1 here is a 180% scaling true damage and it barely even able to kill Wu Yu, right? It still, it still needs a few hit to kill Wu Yu. Then Elif 1 is only 50% of the attack, so I don't think this true damage is able to use in PvP content. If some additional damage is good, but I don't think it really changes too much in her. DPS output in terms of PvP. So I think she's more like a PvE expert. Then R4 when element advantage increased damage then R6 here when she's in lion stance is active which is the one that I mentioned in the lion stance here. So lion stance is active and it will perform an assist attack with lion's raw when an ally attack. So basically become a Yun Chuan when R6 because uh, Usually she will go into lion stance because she have a very very thick shield here and you want her to be in lion stance to increase her attack by 40% here. You don't want her to be in contested territory that often, right? So R6 effect here will make her able to go into lion stance very often and keep casting a pursuit attack with S1. So she will become a Yun Chuan. But not sure if the DPS output if we compare with Yun Chuan who is better, but this is the skill kit, right? So then now let me show you her how she works, how she performs in the battle. Okay, so uh, I already summoned for her and then I summoned for her Divinity 1 so we can see how she applies the debuff. Okay, so the, the equipment wise is just a random equipment so don't worry about it. I'm just gonna showcase like how is she gonna perform in the battle. All right, so 3D model itself at the start of the combat, they won't have any lion there. They all only summon the lion when uh, when she take the turn. So S3, I'll cleanse everyone first. Right, so let's say I cast just one random skill. Right, so Abigail, when I put Abigail on her, will uh, we'll apply attack out and crit damage out, we'll, which will we'll trigger her lion stance passive when she gains the attack out, all this thing, then she'll cast an S3 effect. So let me cast it on her. Alright, then she'll S3 do damage to them. And then because mine is Divinity 1, so there's only a 50% chance to apply the debuff. So when I apply this debuff on them, they'll increase the damage taken plus 2%. And then when they end their turn, we'll clear this effect no matter how many stacks it have, and then deal true damage to them. Alright, so I already apply, then I can cast another S3 to apply again. So you can see this guy here has two stacks. Here, this guy here has one stack. Some guy here doesn't have because they resist it. Okay, so now I already have the stack here. So if I cast S3 to reapply the attack up, even though Elif now have already have attack up, it will still re-trigger the, the lion stance passive. Okay, so S3 apply, 
then I, of course I get attack up and then it will re-trigger the S3 and do another AoE damage and this AoE damage is also able to let them stack so now this one is 2, this one is 2 stack okay then I just random attack some skill now then we wait alright okay, you can see no matter how many stack they have the moment they take their action the debuff will instantly clear and then take the true damage so the sun you see there's a 1397 red color damage that one is the true damage there all right so let me just do more damage here all right then i can cast s1 apply right seer and then apply the debuff here right okay s2 put up shield okay i can s2 on her uh should i no never mind i just cast s1 Alright, AP push. Just random keep will do. Alright, then S3. AOE damage. Applies the debuff. S1. S3 on her. Apply the buff again. Go into the boat. So as long as her shield don't break, she won't go into the contested territory but if she uh, if her shield breaks then she will go into contested territory so now if you have three stack we will increase the damage taken so this is basically her whole kit at r0 nothing too much to show nothing too um eye catchy when it's at r0 so if i have to make another showcase for her i think that will be a r6 showcase for her and that will be in uh, for subtle fantasy okay so basically that's it for now because pretty much that's that's all i can showcase for now for her kit basically just like cast s3 keep roaring keep roaring and apply the debuff so i think she will be a good um Falsetto fantasy boss bossing as well but i am not sure if she's actually able to replace yin chuan position because i feel like it's Similar to Yin Chuan's position, but more higher investment because it needs to be R6. But meanwhile, Yin Chuan only needs to be R2. So yeah, um, let's see if they're gonna change anything about her because I feel the skip, the kit and her leader buff is a bit weird at the moment. Like, why why defend leader buff, right? Okay. So hope you guys enjoy the video and see you guys in the next video. Bye bye. Special thanks for the direct support on the YouTube membership. So for the benefactor of Artier, which is Gen MP, Rosas15, Mokot Regili, The Bluest Chalane, Pigeon Roulette, Kemi, thank you so much for the support. And for the supporter and patron of Artier, which is Louis Shenader, Agni, Kut Wilderness, Wang Tamer, Ziggy, Kamaruki, Sun Watts, Rimu, Chani, Von Hexa, Rawson Bessie, Antonio Winterspoon, Marilyn Williams, thank you so much for the support. And that's not all. Also, special thanks for the direct support on the live stream super chat, the latest clan. So, special thanks to Pigeon Surulit, Agni, Ziggy, Code Wilderness, Chani, and Rosas15. Thank you so much for the support, and hope you guys enjoyed the video, and see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.